I've always been told the effort you put into what you do is the result you're going to get out of it. I think oysters are rewarding because of that. They respond to the environment and they respond to the farmer. Well, so. here's the thing, and this may sound goofy, but you almost get attached to these things. First thing they ask, you know, where's the oysters from? And I say, across the street. Right. And they laugh at me thinking I'm kidding. Right. And right. then I actually show them right. pictures and form. Yeah. Then of course, how old are they? Well, they're less than 24 hours old. Well, how do you know? Well, because I, I raised them, they're right. my babies. I I've seen I them from the seed, took them, I harvested them, and get them in less than 24 hours back in the restaurant. part of the experiment where we've been comparing the flipping frequency of these cages. Uh, we sort of figured that different sites are going to need uh, different flipping frequencies. What we might do here might not be what you might do in Louisiana or maybe in North Carolina. Um, and so the idea was to get these cages out at multiple sites in different states and see what kind of differences we saw. That's what this plan is about, is what works in South Carolina for us. And we got North Carolina and all the other southern states uh, doing their studies. And this is going to develop into a best management plan for flipping routines and care and management of your oyster boat system. We've been up to North Carolina, yep. seen the cages there. Georgia, I know the, mm. the states in the Gulf of Mexico are seeing something completely different to what mm -hmm. we're experiencing here in the South Atlantic. Mm -hmm. Being able to have that point of contact and that industry partner in each state for us as part of this project has, has helped us really work out the nuances between each state and I think help growers interested in getting into this industry have really local knowledge on what works best in their state. I can tell already the study's not over with but we're already uh, gleaning really good information and details on the best management plans for these systems. We're, we're learning a lot. I've been buying Frank's oysters as long as I've had the restaurant here. Very important to me to have been a part of Frank's operation since the beginning and developed a, a friendship with Frank and been able to talk about the hard work and love that goes into the finished product. And we try to translate that into you know our customers' dining experience. They love the fact I mean, the guy that owns the oyster farm is bringing them to us and they're coming there and they're getting them right away so that sense of place uh, really follows the oyster all the way up until it's consumed in our place so i think what's important is you're telling the story of the place that also ties in with the story of how you farm them yeah. like somebody else could farm completely differently here and produce an oyster even though it's in the same salinity same water yeah. but they're not doing it the way you're doing it like that that lets each farmer put their imprint, we call it handcrafted, like you've handcrafted these oysters. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's just kind of the new. same theme you'd see in kind of the larger craft movement type stuff, you know right, what I mean? Right. I mean, taking some pride in what you're doing and uh, not uh, just cranking out product, right. you know, just, hey, guiding nature in, in, in making this, this wonderful thing that, um, you know, is a food unlike any other, right? We're just starting to see sort of this renaissance of, of southern oysters with the introduction of aquaculture techniques into the southern U.S. and the Gulf. And that's creating these beautiful oysters like you see here, nice shapes to them, nice cup, nice fan, uniform in size. The consumer maybe isn't necessarily used to seeing this kind of oyster um, out of the south. It might be something they're used to from the northeast. and. Uh, I would imagine the, the flavor profiles are maybe a little different than what they're used to. Well, what's your favorite salinity to eat oysters? Like, um, you got a, I'm, got I'm a between, range? I'm between 20 and 24. I'm like a 15 to 20. Okay. I mean, I've really enjoyed getting into that like 18 to 22 part per thousand range. You got I don't favorite? need them. You don't need them? <laughs> That's the best farm That's manager, is somebody who works hard and doesn't eat oysters. Uh, somebody coined it as a joke because we knew about terroir and some people started calling it marowar. I don't know, but I, I like it. I don't know if it's actually in the dictionary yet, but we all use it. Yeah flavor of the sea. I'm just a gigantic uh, oyster enthusiast, so you know, to see this going on and after being here for 35 years, 36 years, and just to see what these guys are doing to make the oysters come back, we, you know, we, we really want to see the farm-raised oysters and the wild oyster and rebuild the beds and work uh, simultaneously to make a sustainable oyster product again. It's about the fine-tuning. Yeah. It's about not just growing a really great oyster, but doing it the same way time and time again.